The Wellness Show, Episode 22. Welcome to The Wellness Show, a podcast on health and wealth. I'm your host, Tyson Bannigan, the founder of the Extraordinary Healing Arts Academy. Join me as we get the latest insight, tips, and strategies from wellness providers, coaches, and successful heart-centered entrepreneurs, and much, much more. So welcome to the show, everybody. I'm really excited today to have Paul Cousineau on the show, and we're going to talk about his latest podcast, and even more exciting for me is the whole concept of building community of like-minded people. So tell us a bit about who you are to get us started and how this all came about. I'll gladly do that. And first, I want to thank you for having me on the show and being able to share this message. I believe that this is an opportunity for all of your listeners as well. It's not just something that you know is, is for me. And this is why the community model is so important. And who I am, I have a background in accounting. I have a CPA designation and I did the route of doing auditing as well as big corp. And then I had some different life-changing events and I went into the Amazon rainforest, came back, and then I started to work on projects to make a meaningful contribution in my community, in the world, and really starting to live my dreams. And then that led me to ultimately what came to be, which is the spiritual voice, which is the recent project right now. This showed up to me in a series of four dreams at the start of January. And my skeptical mind was saying, oh, Paul, what are you doing now? You're, you were just starting to get things settled, but I have started to know better. And I know that my dreams have been guiding me very well. So I just went full on in it. And what I was perceiving through the dreams is you're actually part of a project and you're going to be playing a role in helping our collective vision become into the world. And that's the attitude that I started taking when I worked on the spiritual voice. Well, that sounds exciting. Uh, this must be quite, you know, I want to say overwhelming, but obviously it's not. you got a big smile on your face. But, you know, when I think about you being the accountant and being the, you know, the guy in the suit and, you know, the clean cut of guy that's got to do all this business stuff, this is quite a shift for you. I mean, this is quite something listening to dreams and being spiritually guided and, going to the Amazon and, you know, really coming back into your, of who you are. I mean, this is a big shift. And I'm just wondering, you know, I think that's really uh, pretty unusual. But for those that are on this call, you know, I like to think that we're reaching the average person. I think it's encouraging, you know, if your life is not quite the way that you want, guess what? You have a possibility to change it and it can be almost in a blink of an eye. And here you are showing up having actually done that. Yeah, well, I think it's, it's not necessarily the blink of an eye. That would be probably an understatement. <laughs> but it is true that you have the ability to change your life. And for me, what I was realizing is that I wasn't happy going for the accountant route and the money and the power and the title. And really, I was working in cubicles. Mm. And that was not the best of environments for me. And that's what led me to going in the Amazon. Now there's a whole story around that, which would take the entire show and that I don't necessarily want to go there. But one of the important contrasts was I felt I was in such a tight environment with my beliefs in the urban landscape that I thought if I went in the Amazon rainforest, this would be a completely different shift, a different change of my settings, which would allow different ideas to come true in my life and different possibilities. And that is exactly what happened. So one of the key things that I learned here for the listeners is that just changing your environment, and it doesn't have to be that big, changing your environment could make a drastic change in your life. And that can be as simple as you've got a two bedroom apartment, change maybe your master bedroom from one room to the other one and decorate it differently and your ideas will flow through differently. Yes, that's really interesting. It can be just as simple as that. Um, you know, some people say, you know, I, it's hard to change my mind, you know, but you know, it's not that difficult. Just rearrange the environment around you and your mind shifts. 
Yeah. And then the dream aspects, well, that became very scary because I was an analytical person. I still use my logic, but these dreams, the first time that I really started paying attention was when I played the didgeridoo. And I had a dream almost every other night of playing this didgeridoo. And that's a Aboriginal Australian instrument. It's like a horn. And I'm not musical. I hated music. And I'm like, this is crazy. And after one full year of it, I'm like, well, this is turning into a nightmare. This is an insistent, persistent dream. So I actually got one. And within a month, I was playing it. And then I was doing like uh, sound energy massages. And I met someone that taught me how to work with it. And I was like, wow, I never thought that I had that in me. Well, that's incredible. And that didgeridoo... It's not an easy instrument to play. And not only that, you get to learn how to breathe. Yes, the circular breathing technique, right? Yeah. Where you're learning to blow air while you're breathing in. That was quite intimidating. But within a month, I had it. And I was like, wow. And people weren't believing it. They're like, no, you, you've been <laughs> playing for more than And I'm telling you, yeah. I just learned it. And that's when I started paying attention to my dreams. So when I had these dreams of the spiritual voice, it laid out a blueprint and it said, here's how you're going to be doing it. And you're going to be working with the community. It was, I'd say a 90 degree turn from what I was doing. But I knew that the dream wouldn't necessarily guide me in the wrong place. So I moved with it. And within a week, I had over 200 people wanting to support the vision. And they were talking to their friends and their relationships. And I'm like, wow, I had more success in a week than I've had in seven months with my other project. Wow. Yeah. Listen to your dreams. Yes, literally. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> You're being guided. <laughs> so tell me about the spiritual community and, and what's the vision for that? And I know that the radio show is just really part of that, sort of like the tip of the iceberg, but the vision is quite, quite expansive. So could you explain a bit about that? Sure, I'd love to do that. So what I am seeing this, it's a co-creative space where we can all come together and start answering these deeper questions about who am I? Why am I here? What is actually happening around me? What is my purpose? All these deep, challenging inquiries that we can have in ourselves, as well as explore different spiritual paths. And I'm removing the mystery out of spirituality, and I'm removing all of the dogma and the rules that are around it. I mean, the only basic guideline is you have to be respectful. You know, there is no... Uh, behavior, let's say, that is hateful, that would be tolerated, of course. But then what is happening is that I'm seeing it's accepting people from all walks of life. So you can come in there and then learn about Buddhism, meditation, art, minimalism. You might even learn about, well, what might be the spiritual implications of selling and having a business. You can learn about spirit animals. You can learn about all of these different techniques and exchange and share about your experience. And then one of the main pillars is I'm helping people facilitate groups among themselves so that they can truly practice together. Well, that's great. And this is important. Yeah, it is important. That's fundamentally the concept of masterminds and communities from that perspective. And I'm right there with you. I think it's very powerful. So tell me more about the community vision. Why community? I mean, most spiritual paths until recently have been a very lonely path. They've been, oh, we go to the Himalayas or we go to Nepal or we go meet with the Dalai Lama or we go, you know, go to the jungle like you did or I go to be with my Mayan shaman. But it's, yeah, we do some group work together and ceremony, but personally it's more a personal path. So how did you come to the idea of community, of like-minded people, that that's really where the, the power is for co-creation? How did you come to that awareness? As I came back from the Amazon jungle and I had this opening, all of my network, except for maybe 1%, did not understand 
what I was talking about, what I was experiencing. And it was very hard for me to integrate that in my life. And then that caused me what I would call a second wave of pain. Mm. And that caused a lot of confusion. And then once I started finding a community, it was more yoga studios, meditation centers. And even then, it seemed to be a very dogmatic approach where they were telling me what was the path, what were the rules. And then there was not much opportunity for me to talk about my experience with other people. And what I realized in me is that this is a journey of self-discovery, but that by exchanging with other people, that is what creates opening to different ideas and different pathways. So let's say that you're navigating in a city and you're only familiar of two main highways and you don't even know that there's other ramps or there's other roads that you can take. How can you fully explore yourself if you're not even aware of these areas? But if you're in a community and then you have your two highways and someone else has four different roads and now we're talking about, I'm like, hey, wait, that's quite interesting what you're talking about, Tyson. I want to learn more about that. And then I'm asking you, well, how can I experience, how can I explore your spirituality? And then I can try it out and see if that's something that I want to deepen or not. And it's removing that isolation because I found, especially in a professional network, it's not very acceptable to be talking about these things. And they say uh, politics, religion, and then there's another topic that I've been told never talk about that in social settings. Those are at the core of my being. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I know the question that I was always asked because, you know, people say, well, what's your, you know, what do you believe? And, you know, well, it's really hard for me to, to say that. So I just play around that. I say I'm a Christian, Taoist, Buddhist, sometimes nudist. That's how I explain it. So it's a synthesis for me. But the criticism that I've received, which I don't pay much attention to, is, yeah, but Tyson, you're just a cherry picker. You just take a little bit from here and a little bit from that. You never really go deep enough. So how do you deal with that? I know for me that that's not true. I know that the continuity of all the paths of enlightenment back to source are just variations, you know, like petals on the flower. But for most people, they feel they got to stick to one, you know, and it, there's rules and regulations and and duties and obligations, and you know, if you deviate from the path, you could get in trouble. So, how do you deal with the, the eclectic person who wants to cherry pick? Is that you, or how did you deal with all of that? Yes, that is me, and that was one of the challenges that I had because in several of the spiritual circles that I was meeting, they were saying, Well, Paul, you're doing spiritual shopping, yeah, and that made me feel really bad inside, and it was almost as if that was wrong. Yeah. But really, I consider myself an explorer of consciousness. And this sure. is what is fascinating me. And I want to look at all facets and looking at all different angles of my spirituality and what consciousness is, is a deepening of the awareness and that understanding. So it is actually a path in itself. Now, where do we uh, deal with that with the community? I believe that a lot of people are feeling similarly as I am in what you just expressed. But because there's another rule that is you have to stick to one path and it's not acceptable and we want to be accepted and we want to also have access to that knowledge. So then without knowing it, we start playing a role and then we believe that no, no, I, it's wrong for me to explore these other ideas. It's wrong for me to try out. Oh, well, if I actually believe in Christianity, I should never approach shamanism. Or maybe the Zen path is something that is totally unacceptable. Well, no, because I believe that we're all unique. And unique means that we have to craft our own understanding of spirituality. And if it's coming from something external that is imposed on you, then that it's not you. At least that's my belief. You know, and, and you don't have to take that as well because it becomes a catch-22, right? So if you believe that external can impose on who you are, well, that's fine with me as well. But this is a place where all of that is accepted. And then what's really cool is that 
there's actually a spiritual retreat component that is tied to this spiritual voice. So we're all going to be coming together on an annual basis for three days and then meet in person. And it's not all about these deeper discussions, but it's also about being able to just make that human connection. And then let's laugh and have fun together. Let's have a giant fire play music, instruments, and yeah, let's do art. If someone wants to do, like, there's different uh, opportunities there to practice. But again, I think it's just building into that community where you can be exactly who you are, and we're actually encouraging you to do that. Yeah, so just show up and be you. Spirituality and all. Yeah! <laughs> right. And I like well, the- fun, too. So that, that, that sort of... Um, more, we need a lot more fun. I know I can get very serious about what I'm doing. So I know uh, it's great to have, meet another fellow fairy, you know, cherry picker, fellow cherry picker. I couldn't even say that for a moment. So, yeah. Um, so I know I have some fairy, very, I can't even say that. I have some favorite cherries that I pick, right? One of them right now is I'm on the Taoist path. And uh, that's, uh, wow, that's quite an intense one. It's, you know, it's 15 day long, so that's 15 months of doing this, right? So that's one. And another one of my favorite right now is the Mayan shamanism, where I go work with the shaman, and I've been doing that for four years. So I bet that there's some that are favorites for you. So what's one of your favorite paths right now? Or do you have one? Yes, uh, shamanism is dear to my heart, and particularly working with the different plant medicines. Uh, which for me is something that I approach carefully Yes. because I, I find, you know, it can throw you down the rabbit hole, mm. but it's also really satisfying my hunger in that search for understanding of my own consciousness and really uh, allowing myself to expand in new understandings of myself and reality. So I have been enjoying this path very much and then the other pat is, I guess it's the, the community aspect. Right. Because I used to be very centered on myself. And now I'm discovering the magic of being in relationship with other people. And I found that that has given me so many growth opportunities. And I get really uncomfortable. Like sometimes I can be in a social setting or with a friend and even my girlfriend, I'm saying, you know what? I'm getting really, really uncomfortable right now. And I have like this tension and this anxiety. I know all is great, but it's still coming up. And then this allows me to have a deeper understanding of myself. So I guess this pat would be one that is self-carved. Wow. I like that. That's really quite uh, insightful to realize that they are learning so much by being in a group, right? That That you're expanding your consciousness by having to deal with all these other energies and what's my energy, what's their energy, and how does that all work together? Yeah, community is really quite something. I know that two toothbrushes in the bathroom is one thing, but when you got more than two, things can get really complicated. And I know that from the 70s. But, you know, I do have a background in intentional communities, and I have to say when it works, you can move mountains. It is so powerful. And when it doesn't, it can be hell on earth. But I got to say the highs are worth it, you know, all those lows that you have to go through. It's sort of interesting in that I've, we discovered in community that we go through stages like humans do. Like there's actual community stages of getting used to being with each other, of how to process information, how to feel comfortable around each other. Like you were saying, hey, I've had enough of this. I don't know if I can handle all this. It's too much input and wanting to escape. So, yeah, there's a whole other body of information that our culture is not familiar with because we're rugged individuals or we think we need to be, whereas the tribal people, the indigenous, are more community-minded. It's, that's what I've found in my travels with indigenous people. Yes, and one of the key aspects is learning to respect and accept each other as well as yourself. So sometimes I may be saying, this is triggering me, this experience, I'm having it, and it's negative. And then the other person responds, and they're like, well, that's not what I meant, and I don't want to cause that. And I'm like, well, I know, but it's still happening, and now I need to cool off. And then having that person respect and understand that without as well taking it personal or perhaps they take it personally 
And then afterwards, well, it's like, okay, well, now how do we talk what just happened so that everyone feels that their needs were met and had their equal opportunity for growth? Because as I grow, then you grow and whatnot, but we also have to respect our own timing and pacing, which will most likely not be the same because we're different individuals. Absolutely. So I know that you uh, love to go on sacred journeys like I do. So what's the next one you're planning on? And, and are you going to take your tribe with you? So this one, I'm actually going with my girlfriend and it's in May and it'll be in the Andes. And we're going to be meeting with Adolfo, which is one of the Alto Yomasayo, to learn how to work with Demisa. And she's been writing the book of his story and the knowledge of his people. And there was a movie featuring him, which is called Wisdom Keepers. And I'm extremely excited to be going on that journey into the mountains and connect with the mountain spirits. And then in July, I'm going to be taking my tribe into the Amazon rainforest to work with a family that works with some of the plant medicines there. And that's where my life took its drastic turn in 2012. And then in September, I'm taking people to do a vision quest in the desert of Utah, followed by our community gathering at the end of that month. And then I'm going back in the Amazon rainforest with another group at the end of October. Oh my goodness, that sounds really busy. Well, you know, <laughs> it's nice to fit you into uh, the ones that we're planning. We're going to be doing uh, a sacred shoe shop, which is uh, helping people connect with the landscape. And uh, every landscape is like a human body. It has a heart chakra and it has the angelic kingdom and how to speak with them and call them down and how to take all that information home so that you can work with the angels and the elementals and the fairies and, and all of that, not only in your garden, but in your whole bioregion. So that's one we're going to be working on. That's one of my passions. And the other one was to return to the, down to the Maya lands and to go to the sacred temples and learn how to do cer ceremony and to bring that back too. So, yeah, so we have a lot in common and, and all this begins and ends with having fellow travelers who join us on these adventure so it makes it far much much more fun to do that so yeah so tell me the other part of the the community that you're building through your website right it's not just the journeys and it's not just the gatherings although those are really exciting you want to uh, bring people together through your website as well is that correct Yes. So what's happening is that a whole platform is being created. One of the components of that is the podcast, which is the spiritual voice. And that was the first component of it that was revealed to the world. And in that, I'm interviewing what I call spiritual experts and masters from all walks of life. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's taking some spiritual concepts that might seem like, oh, it's up there and I don't understand, and then bringing it to a very practical level and deciphering some of those words that we might not be familiar with and having a practice that people can apply in their day-to-day -day life and do that exploration. And on the flip side, I'm taking what I call like the mundane or seemingly mundane and then seeing, well, out of this... What actually are the spiritual components out of that? And how can we apply that in our life to deepen that exploration? And then we have through the website, a community that is being built. And when people join the community, they have access to all of these different experts. So all of the experts are featured on the podcast are providing exclusive content to that community. And some of them can be live workshops, live interviews, techniques. Some of them are providing some of their books and we can have particular trainings and whatnot. So you get to engage directly with these people to deepen your exploration. And then this is a, we're using, I guess a forum platform would be the best way to describe it. We've actually have our whole server and infrastructure for that because I didn't want that to be inside of uh, Facebook or any of that social media so that we could have a depth in our exploration. And this is from where the collaboration and the facilitation of practicing together. So how do we organize groups so that we might, let's say, meet every Wednesday and then practice the art as spirituality? Maybe other people want to be doing some of the meditation practices on Friday morning. Someone else might want to do shamanism. So all that is being set up. And right now we're gathering 50 founding members that are going to help me 
co-create and design like the flavor and organize all of this. And that's going to be by the end of, uh, of this month, basically at the end of February, we're going to have the 50 founders. And then by the end of March, we're going to open the door to the broader community so that we can all be there and receive them, guide them, make sure that they feel welcome. And how does this actually work and how can they benefit? And then they enter the co-creative experience as this is going to continue to grow and we're going to have an archive of all of the different materials in a way that's easy for people to navigate regardless of where you are on your path. Wow, that sounds exciting. So how are people going to find us? What's your website? So they can go at the spiritualvoice.com and over there, you'll have access to the podcast, information about the community, if you want to become a founder, if you want to join afterwards. And you also have access to my email and my social media. Through that, you can also find me, The Spiritual Voice, on Facebook, as well as Paul Cousineau, which is my name. And Paul is spelled P-O-L. Do the last name, too. Cousineau, all right, yes, uh, Cousineau, and that's uh, French, so that's spelled C-O-U-S-I-N-E-A-U, and N is as in Nancy, so Paul Cousineau, and, uh, and then you should be able to find me, but if you go at thespiritualvoice.com, there you'll get everything. Yeah, so at thespiritualvoice.com, I was over there this morning having a listen at your introduction, which is really quite good to give people an idea of what this shopping list is all about and that, uh, you know, that we don't need to be scared with the concept of spirituality, that it's a part of who we are and it's a path that we can choose to take. And it's much better to do it together than it is alone. So um, what sort of tidbits do you have? Because I imagine that there will be sort of Joe and Martha average maybe listening to this show and, wondering, well, what's all this spirituality stuff? I heard him talking about all this stuff. But what does it mean for me? How do, I, how do I even know about all this stuff? How do I get started? Or how do I know that there's a spiritual path in my life? What would be some of the clues? Well, the fact is, even if you don't consider it a spiritual path or not, for me, it doesn't really matter. What this is all about is for you to be able to live each day with a little bit more joy, being able to laugh a little bit more, and really moving towards the life that you want in your dreams. And for me, that's what spirituality really is about. So as you go in your days, maybe it's like, well, noticing what is actually nourishing you and what isn't i have a good example like the news i stopped listening to mainstream news because i found it was making me angry Mm. well if you remove just a portion of that doesn't even mean all of it but if you remove a portion of that and you notice that it's a trigger for you i believe that you're actually taking care of yourself and you're going to live with more joy and happiness so for me that is you taking that spiritual path and it can also just be acknowledging people in your household hey, I really appreciate you being in my life. And I think that you're an incredibly generous person and you've actually helped me become a better person. Or it can just be, wow, that was like an amazing dinner. It doesn't have to be really complicated. But on the flip side of that, if you have projects, if let's say that you have a business idea, or maybe you want to change jobs or you want to study in a field, well, there's obviously a calling inside of you. Otherwise, you would not have that desire. So taking one simple action to go towards that every day, and that might just be thinking about it for a minute. How could I make that happen? That's an action. If you take one step towards your dreams and your desires, you are actually going to be the highest, best, amazing self that you can be. And this is what it's really all about taking that tiny step every day. Well, I love it. It's been a great pleasure having you on the show. We'll have you back as we get closer into you actually getting the community up and running and have a conversation about how it's going. So I'm very excited about this. And as you know, I'm part of your founding group and I look forward to being part of that and being part of this adventure as we do this voyage of discovery. So thank you for showing up. And it was great having this time with you. Thanks. 
It was really amazing. And thanks again, Tyson. I had a blast here. And thanks to all of your listeners. All right. Bye-bye. For quality online wellness products, courses, and services, visit our sponsors, thewellnessstore.ca and the Extraordinary Healing Arts Academy located at thewellnessacademy.ca. To stay in touch, visit us at thewellnessshow.ca. And until next time, be healthy, wealthy, and wise.